Hello friends, hope you are having a fantastic day today. So in this video, we are going to talk everything related to big O notation and time complexity. Uh, and it is a really important topic for computer science because it is a way for us to identify that how efficient our solution is and how practical it would be to implement in the real life system. So that is why a lot of companies rely quite heavily on what type of solutions you can make. On top of that, can you evaluate your existing solution as well? So in this video, we would cover everything related to big O and let's get started. So if we have to define what big O is or what time complexity means, it is a simple way for you to determine that how efficient your solution is. It is a quantifiable measure that you that says that your solution uh, runs in this much time or it is dependent on these, these, these factors. So that is why this is the efficiency of the solution and where it really shines is that where you are comparing two different solutions for the same problem that you are trying to convey. In that case, you would see that what would be the big O time complexity of solution A and what would be the big O time complexity of solution B and that would give you the clear indication on which solution to select and how effective would it be. So let's try to understand this within with a real life scenario. Let's say that uh, your dad tells you that hey uh, go to this phone book and I'm not talking about phone book on your phone I'm talking about some time earlier where we used to have actual physical copies of books uh, where it would have numbers of all the vendors that are currently present around the city so let's say that uh, your dad asks you that hey find me the number of XYZ plumber uh, from this phone so you have two ways to find the solution number one way is that you start from the first page of the first line of the uh, phone book and let's mark this as phone book you start uh, going linear so you go for the first page then you go for the second page again then you go for the third page and something 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 so eventually after let's say five hours you end up finding the uh, number for xyz plumbing and then you give that back to your dad but at the same time, your dad asked that why did you took so much time and then you explain that this is the procedure you followed and you it, you came up with this solution. Then your dad says that there is a better approach and that better approach is that because this phone book is already lexicographically sorted. So what does lexicographically sorted means that any character starts with A is going to become first rather than any word starting with B. So with that manner, your dad would show that you can open uh, some random page in the middle of the uh, phone book. And let's say that that random page is currently starts with M. Now you are trying to find the value that starts from X. So what you would do is you would ignore all of the pages that were in the middle portion and then all the remaining portion from m to z you would again open some middle page let's say that you find the value t you, which means you your x should reside between this portion and then you also open some middle page and then you ultimately find the page that starts with x and then you find your xyz solutions uh, xyz plumbers number quite easily in this case your dad only opened four different pages and from those four pages he actually found out the number he was looking for meanwhile in your case you had to open hundreds of pages just to get to the same solution so in this case we can define that the number of pages that we needed to open would be a big o in this case or we can also say that the amount of time we spend to find the solution can also be the big o in either case the solution to seems to be much faster. Why? Because we are using a different set of principles and we are following some properties that already exist to find the most optimal solution. And that is why uh, it is really important for us to understand that how do we actually measure the solution and based on that solution we can actually start computing that uh, how effective our solution is and we can communicate this with efficiency with all the other stakeholders in our company or in our home and or in our day to day lives. So that's why you must have to make sure that uh, you understand the whole concept of Beko. Now let's just uh, get started that what is the definition and purpose of uh, big O. So if we put down the simple definition, uh, big O is basically a mathematical formula that is used to describe the upper bound of an algorithm's running time. And what do I mean by upper bound? Well, let's go back to our previous example. In this case, we had a phone book and in our phone book, we had, let's say, uh, we have 500 number of uh, vendor numbers so what would be the upper bound 
if we were to follow for this 500 if we decide to go linearly and one by one we decide to find the solution in this case the upper bound is going to be that total number is going to depend on the maximum number available and that is 500 but if we follow the efficient approach in the efficient approach what we would significantly do is with every single turn of page we would eliminate almost half of the uh, problems so uh, in the efficient efficient solution let's say that for the first time we open the page and the word m starts so we can determine that the word we are looking for does it exist in the first portion or in the second portion whichever we we decide to move forward essentially we are eliminating almost half of the inputs with every single call which means uh, within let's say 5 to 10 uh, changes we would be able to go through entire 500 uh, names and we would be able to find our solution so in this case uh, for the same problem we can say that the inefficient approach actually has the upper limit that was uh, completely defined on the number of vendors that were present so this can be defined on big of n where we are assuming that n is currently the number of vendors that are already present inside the phone book but in our efficient approach since we are eliminating half of the uh, values at with every single iteration essentially we are dealing in the time complexity of big o of log n where with every single iteration we are taking the logarithm of value n so we are essentially eliminating half of the values so these are just two of the examples on how big o can be defined and this is just a high level understanding now for the big o are we consider about the best case scenario of course not why because we are trying to find that how would be the efficiency of any particular solution so we should not assume that uh, always we are going to take care of the best case scenario we would actually calculate the big o uh, based on the worst case scenario that uh, let's say that if the worst case scenario happens still how uh, efficient our solution is going to be and going back to our same example in this case in the worst case we would end up searching all 500 names in our efficient approach in the worst case we would only search somewhere between seven names and we would get, get our solution so you can see that how significant difference can it make uh, knowing that which big o to pick depending on the situation you are currently now now let's see that why big o is so important in technical interviews and you the answer is actually quite simple the purpose of technical interview is to see that how how smart you are in building efficient solutions and how would you know that if a solution is efficient or not if you cannot if you don't have any um, measurement or any unit of measure to say that uh, what you what you have provided or what you have done is correct or not that is why uh, there is a huge em emphasis on big o and knowing that how it is calculated is going to be quite significant now let's just get started with uh, what would be the step by step guide to analyze uh, different time types of big o's so first let me write down some of the big o operations that they are and then we would talk that how do we start actually calculate and which operation is defined what type of big o so number one operation is a constant time big o what constant time big o means that this operation is a static operation and computer no matter the number of in, uh, size increases computer would take same time to calculate this value so this is actually a finite uh, number this is not an infinite number and uh, you can take this as an example let's say that if i give you two values a and uh, b and i ask you to do the sum of two values so this procedure will only be computed in a constant time and that is why uh, at any given point in our solution if we are doing some operation that is like a b uh, a plus b or a minus b or a multiplication of b or a division of b something like this or all the mathematical formula or uh, all the common pieces of the work that we are doing in that case we can define that all of this solution is actually being done in big o of one time or big o of constant time so that is really important to understand next comes big o of n time and this is a really important time complexity because you are going to encounter this in so many occasions so let me give you an example suppose you are given an input array as an input now inside this array you are given random values so values can be like 5 7 1 2 uh, 6 now you are being told that in this array if you were to find value number 6 does it exist or not how would you do it 
so in that case the only solution is that you would iteratively go one by one uh, until you reach to the end value and you find the solution so in this case you find the solution that six does exist but it depended on what it depended on what are the total number of elements currently present inside the array let's say that in this array currently you only have five elements present but what if you had a huge humongous array with like let's say 500 elements so in that case the number of computation that you would have to do is uh, would be 500 let's say if there was an uh, an even bigger array with million values so you would have to do million computation in order to find value number six and again i'm talking about the worst case scenario not the average case scenario which means the higher the number of input grows the more times it takes for us to compute and the relationship is actually one by one which means if we plot it on a graph it, it, the graph would look like this where uh, this would be the number of n and this would be the number of computation that we need to do and it is going to be a linear line and in this case we can define that for this approach the uh, big o or the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n now let's take another example but that is slightly different uh, and we will try to understand that what does big o of log n means so big o of log n indicates that with every single iteration we are essentially eliminating half or 50 percent of our uh, inputs so let's take an example let's say that we have a huge array and currently in this array let's understand that we have 1000 values okay now I'm just drawing few values on the graph and also one important property for this uh, array is that this array is currently sorted which means that we can actually use the property of binary search in this case and how would we do it so let me mark some values so let's say that the first value is 1 then there is some middle value that is let's say 73 then there is some another middle value or the exact middle value for this array is let's say 500 and then there are some values over here that is 700 and then there is one value that is 1000 so this is how our array is now i ask you that in this given sorted array you try to find the value 73 now you you or we already have the option that we can go linearly we can go one by one by one by one by one for every single value until we reach value number 73 and then we can return that in the answer but that solution would yield us the solution of big o of n but can we do something better uh, and the answer is yes why because this given input array is sorted so because of that what we would do is first we would try to find the middle value so middle value is currently 500 so 500 is actually much greater than the value 73 which means all the values that are currently right side of the 500 are always going to be greater than 73 which means we can essentially ignore all of these values that there would not be any possibility if 73 exists it would not exist over here so in that case what we would do is we would again try to go for this portion only and essentially we eliminated 500 use cases just within one single uh, computation and that is the true power of log logarithmic time complexity and also big o of uh, log n time and also binary search now for this one now you we would pick some value uh, that is a 258th location and let's say that the 258th location uh, the value currently at is actually 75 so in this case because we found 75 value then again we would be able to eliminate this half and we would only consider this first half from values 1 to 75 and we would keep on repeating the same process until we find the value 73 and we can return the answer in this case with every single iteration because we were eliminating half of the numbers we can actually mark that uh, uh, the big o or the space complexity for this problem to be big o of log n and lot of the times log n solution is going to be much more faster compared to the linear solution now let's try to understand that what does big o of n square look like and also we would talk about big o of n log n that look uh, how does it looks like so i'm giving you just one example and i'll show you the uh, understanding that how both of them would would work so let's say that we are currently given a simple array and this array only contains four elements but they are randomly placed elements so for these elements let me mark down the values as five three one two something like this now we want to create a sorted array for this particular array so what would be the way to do it well the one most naive approach is that we start iterating over the entire array find the minimum value put it in the first place 
and then keep repeating the same process until we reach to the end. So what would be the solution in the in this case? So during the first iteration, we iterate over all of these places. And by the way, we are creating a new array to store the sorted value. So we are keeping the original input as it is. Now we found that this in inside this cover given current array, the first value is one. So we eliminate we put the first value as one, then we get rid of this value that we have already taken care of. Now we do another iteration and again we found the second least value is value number two. So we put it over here. Then we do another iteration and then we find the value number three. And then we find another iteration and then we find value number five. So what we did was in order to fill out any single one value inside this input array, we had to iterate all the elements essentially to fill that value. Second thing is even same goes for the second element. In order to fill out the second value, we have to iterate over all the values in order to do that. So let's say that in with this approach, if we have an array with million values, essentially, we for every single values, in theory, we would do somewhere between million calls in order to populate just one value. And that would be the solution. So what we did is that for in order we are filling in all the values like this. So we are essentially doing big O of n work that is for sure. But on top of that, for every single element, we are also reaching out to all of these places. So we are doing big O of n work in that case as well. So that would be multiplied by, by big O of n. So in total, we are actually doing big O of n square work, which means our solution is dependent on the square of the given input size. So if the number of input size increases, the solution complexity is going to increase by the multiplication of that number. And that is the key takeaway. Now let's take the same example. Uh, suppose we are once again given the same array and now we are going to do things a little bit differently. So let's say that the values are five, three, two, one, something like this, right? Uh, I actually accidentally created a sorted array. So let me just uh, flip out some of the values. So five, one, two, and three, something like this. Okay. Now in this case, we are trying to create a sorted array. So one smart approach is that we take first element, we put it inside the new array, but whenever we are trying to fill out the second new element, we would actually put it in the correct place using the binary search method. So what would be, what would that look like? Let's say that the first element we, we encounter is value number five. So we would put value number five in our current new array that we have created. Now the next element is value number one. We already know that this array needs to be a sorted array and we are trying to find a place where one needs to put in. Now currently we only found the, let's say that we go to the middle value. We don't find anything. Currently we only have one value five. So we find that currently five is actually greater than value number one. In this case, one has to be placed on the left side of five. So what we would do is we would shift the element. So we would put five on the side and we would put five somewhere over here and we would put one in the left side of five. Same way with value number two. So once again, we check the middle element, middle element is let's say five. So we put down two depending on the value of five. So it needs to be left of five. Uh, so currently we go to left of five and uh, let's say that this middle value is empty and left of it is one. So which means two can fit in in this place. This would be the correct position. Now we have value number three that we needs to put in again for three. We would again use binary search. So we that way we find out that three needs to be on the left of five. But since there is no space, so we would move five to the right side. And in this case, five is going to come over here and then three is going to come over here. And this would be our solution. What we did in this case is in order to fill out any single value, let's say that when, when we need to put five or three, what we had to do is we only had to do log n work because we were using binary search and we had to do this log n work for all of these four values, which means our input is dependent on the number of inputs that are currently given. That is for sure. Plus, because we are doing binary search for each one of them, then that is also dependent on big O of log n as well. And this is essentially the time complexity for or the, this is going to be the big O for the given input. So these are the different big O's for different type of problem. Now what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the, the whole graph of how every single big O represents. This is the big O uh, complexity chart for various different uh, complexities where you can see that the for number one and the most efficient one is at the bottom right that is constant time and very close to it is big O of log n uh, that is also very good time complexity. 
now we have this big o of n where uh, it linearly expands depending on the number of inputs that is slightly higher in terms of number of operations uh, the time complexity but still fairly reasonable then we have big o of n log n that is somewhat bad but still fairly enough that you can work with and you can work with this these solutions now anything get that goes beyond that is actually called horrendous and that is uh, the part of big of n square big of 2 to the power n and the worst of all is big of n factorial so all of these are pretty bad time complexity so whenever you are trying to build a solution and if you find that your solution falls within these values try to see if you can do something better and try to come up with more efficient solution that usually resides in this well there are some problems where you cannot do anything and you cannot find solutions beyond that uh, problems such as traveling salesman problem or np hard problem but that's a different conversation that is the whole uh, there is a whole branch of mathematics dedicated for that but overall for you try to come up within this zone and uh, the life would be beautiful.